Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the start of a little weekend vlog. I will probably do some reading in this video and we're just gonna see where the weekend takes me. I decided that I wanted to film this vlog because I am going to be doing a little experiment test. I don't really know what to call it. It is currently 3 p.m. on Friday, September 3rd. I'm finishing up work in about an hour and then it's going to be the long Labor Day weekend and I'm going to try to stay off social media all weekend. Select social media. I will still watch YouTube videos. I will still listen to podcasts. However, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's been a lot for me recently and I feel like I need a social media detox for like my own mental health right now. If I'm being honest, I've never been a big Facebook user. I only made my Facebook account because when I started college, there was a Facebook group for everybody in my graduating class. I graduated so I don't need that group anymore and Facebook is only good for keeping up with uh, your extended relatives who don't have any other social media. Twitter, I used to use all the time, but I really distanced myself from it. I deleted the app from my phone because I found that looking at Twitter always made me feel like I was in a bad mood after looking at it. So I really can only handle it in small doses. I think the problem with Twitter is there's just a lot of arguing and fighting that goes on there, uh, political discourse, uh, cancel culture, if you will. And I just wanna clarify when I say cancel culture, I don't mean holding people accountable for their actions. I mean when somebody is like, oh, I don't like this celebrity, so I'm going to find something they tweeted in 2009 and say that nobody's allowed to like them anymore. I just feel like it's so exhausting. And every time I leave Twitter, I'm like, oh my God, there's so much drama. And it's just, it's just too much for me. It's not fun like it used to be. And even Instagram recently, I've just been finding that it makes me feel kind of sad. It's really hard because I try very hard to be informed. But recently there's been so much bad stuff going on in the world with the current pandemic that we're still in the middle of. All these people refusing to get vaccinated people dying. And it's always a huge struggle for me because hopefully this makes sense, but sometimes just this constant reporting of all these bad things going on in the world without any positive news to back it up makes me feel really down and I'll be in a funk for days because of it. It'll keep me up at night. But then when I try distance from distance myself from the news, then I feel guilty. And recently, like, I've just been having so much anxiety due to the current state of the world. It's kept me up at night. I think about what happens after we die. Is the world ever going to be back to normal? Is global warming going to make the planet inhabitable before I die? And those aren't the thoughts that you need at night when you're trying to sleep. And sometimes I'm just so paralyzed by fear of the unknown that I feel like it stands in the way of me living my normal life. So I know this intro has been super depressing. I apologize. I think what I'm hoping to gain from this holiday weekend is just to relax, think about all the things that I have to be grateful for in my life, and this is the only life that I'm ever going to have to live, right? So I need to be present, I need to enjoy it, and I need to learn to let go of things that I can't control. So no social media this weekend, no Instagram, and no Facebook, no Twitter. I set up a Tumblr queue so I won't be on Tumblr. I'm not going to use any social media platforms except for YouTube because YouTube always makes me feel good. I really haven't had any anxiety or any issues surrounding YouTube at present. And I think, you know, listening to some videos or some podcasts is totally fine. I'm also going to try to do a lot of reading and maybe a little bit of shopping. I'm trying to save money, but there are some things that I want to buy. Firstly, I have had this 
Barnes & Noble gift card with $23 left on it for months and I was never sure what I wanted to buy with it. However, I decided I wanted to get one of the penguin cloth bound classics because I love those editions but they are a little more pricey and I decided I was going to buy Vanity Fair by William Thackeray because Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery has expressed potentially wanting to do a readathon for that in 2022. So if I have a copy in this lovely edition, then I can participate if she ends up doing that. And because I had my gift card, it was very affordable. I'm super excited. I chose to order online and pick up in store. So tonight I'm going to go get that. I'm super happy about it. And I think I'm also going to pick up some Japanese food and some ice cream. And then me and my mom are going to watch Bachelor in Paradise because a trashy reality show about a bunch of people making terrible decisions always makes you feel better about how your own life is going. So that's about it for now. I hope that this long weekend is going to be really rejuvenating for me and that it's going to be a good thing. I honestly think the hardest thing about staying off social media is going to be I am used to looking at Instagram every single morning when I wake up and every single night while I'm lying in bed before I go to sleep, which is maybe not a good strategy. Maybe that's why I have so much anxiety about it. But for the entire weekend, I'm going to try not to go on to any of those platforms and Hopefully that'll do wonders. So that's what we're going to be doing in this vlog. This intro has gone on for too long. I'll see you in a little bit with some updates on what I'm doing or what I'm reading. Until then. And there it is. A big, chunky, 800 page classic, but really cute edition. Is going to look great on the shelves. Find a spot for it. Gosh, this book. Is literally the size of like three other books. <laughs> Look how big it is compared to all the others. Oh god. I deserve some respect. Don't put me each other. And I'm scared. Right now, in paradise. So what I've been reading so far from the TBR is Four Queens by Nancy Goldstone. So far, I really like this. It's a historical nonfiction, but it's really readable and it has really good detail. I'm currently on page 105, so I actually got a really decent way into it. It's not dense at all. It's very accessible, and I can't attest to how accurate the sources are because I really don't know much about these women so I can't say whether or not all the sources the author uses are accurate but so far everything has been really interesting. I've learned some interesting stuff and one thing Nancy Goldstone does that I appreciate is she doesn't act like she knows what the historical figures were thinking. She says, well, maybe they felt this way, maybe they felt that way, but regardless of which interpretation you believe, we know this is what happened next. And I appreciate that because sometimes when you read history books, the author has their own one interpretation and they act like that's gospel when in reality we can never know exactly what medieval people were thinking or feeling and a lot of times the historical record leaves things out. So so far I am really enjoying this book and I also think this weekend I'm going to start one of the mystery thrillers that were on my TBR. I will check one of them out on the Libby ebook app and start reading that. So uh, I think that's pretty much all for tonight. I do have this face mask that I've had for like a year so maybe I'll use it. I don't even know if it's still good at this point. Do face masks go bad? I don't know but I literally think I've had it since 2020 like February 2020. I think I bought it before I got sent home from college to use and yeah so do face masks have an expiration date? I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. I was going to show you guys a clip of me and my face mask, like, ooh, look how relaxing, but this facial looks so ridiculous on, like, I just can't. 
There was no expiration date on it, though. On a quick Google, the article I found said it doesn't go bad as long as it's still sealed. And this is a paper mask, not a clay mask, so I don't know. We'll let you know if my face falls off or anything. Well, my face didn't fall off, so it's good. Am I glowing? Do I look healthy? Do I look stunning? Gorgeous? Incredible? Show-stopping? Spectacular? <laughs> okay. Hello. I'm sorry. I keep saying I'm gonna not talk to you anymore tonight, and I've already done, like, 20 minutes of vlog, and it's only been one evening. However, I'm going to bed soon, and I decided before I would go to sleep, I would start reading Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh, which is one of the books for my TBR on the Libby app. And basically, this book is about a new mother, and it's the one-year anniversary of her mother's supposed suicide, which happened shortly after her father's suicide. So supposedly both her parents killed themselves in several months. However, very early on in the book, Anna, the main character, receives a note saying her parents didn't kill themselves and so she's gonna find out the truth. There are some troubling lines in Anna's narration also, but I'm really giving Claire McIntosh the side eye, and I hope these are going to be addressed. First of all, Claire's husband, the father of her baby, Mark, was her grief counselor. This man was her therapist, and the fourth session they had, he said, I can't be your therapist anymore because I'm attracted to you and I want to go out to dinner. Do you want to go out with me? That's so, he should lose his license for doing that. That's an inappropriate relationship to have with the person you're treating. Also, at the beginning of this book, her father died 19 months ago, she said, and she already has a baby of indeterminate age. So, assuming she started seeing this man right after her father died and... Let's just assume the baby's a newborn. He still impregnated his client nine, ten months after her father died and they met. Like, this is such a predatory relationship. Oh my god, I hope this is going to be addressed because this, this is not a healthy romance. Secondly, I got a little worried because there was a line where Anna says none of her school friends can understand what it's like to be a mother because 10 years out of college they're all still in bed with their lovers not having babies and I was like hmm okay that felt a little judgy but maybe that's just me maybe it's not meant like that and then there was a scene with Anna and her neighbor, who she doesn't like very much. He, I think he's a single guy. And she mentions that her neighbor doesn't, he's not married and he doesn't have any kids. He only vaguely references nieces and nephews in the disinterested way people who don't have children do. Which again, felt super judgy to me, like Anna is saying being a parent is the most important thing and it's the best thing in the world and everybody else who isn't a parent doesn't understand. Like, it's totally valid to not want to have kids. It's something that I've always been ambivalent at best about myself and it just seems like Anna is super judgy about people who don't have children or don't want to have children. I don't know if this is Claire McIntosh's opinion, but Definitely what I'm getting from the narration so far. Thirdly, the third thing I read that made me decide to film this clip, Anna, as she walks out of the house after getting this note, thinks to herself, for all these months, she blamed her parents for taking the easy way out, but now she knows she shouldn't have blamed them because it wasn't their choice. That is mind-blowingly offensive to say that suicide is the easy way out. Uh, I've had someone close to me in my life die by suicide and to 
say that it's the easy way out is just unbelievably offensive and like people who die by suicide I understand that it does it is really painful to the people who they leave behind in their lives however you have to also understand that they suffer so much that they feel like there's nothing else for them that they can do and to say that it's the easy way out like how dare you I <laughs> This main character, she sucks. She's the worst, okay? And so is her husband. I I don't know I don't know Claire McIntosh's opinions on these issues, so I'm hoping this is going to be addressed later, but who knows. Anyway, now I'm getting fired up before bed. <laughs> I'll keep you guys updated. Anna sucks. Good night. <laughs> Okay, this really is going to be the last time I swear it because I'm not reading anymore tonight. I'm going to bed after this, but... Okay, I referred to him as her husband earlier. They're actually not married. She started seeing this man after her mother died. Twelve months ago. And they have an eight-week-old baby. Yeah, do the math there. He got her pregnant... After the first date, her grief counselor, this man is a predator. Girl, run, run. Also, she's 26 and he's 40. This is not a healthy relationship. Surely Claire McIntosh does not mean for this to be a healthy relationship, right? She can't, right? <laughs> Surely she wants us to be side-eyeing this, right? Because this is not healthy. D do you see this? This is me waving the red flags. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's not good. I mean, listen, obviously, accidental pregnancy happens. It happens. Even if you're being safe, it can happen sometimes. But this man... So many red flags. Older, took advantage of her, impregnated her. The first date oh this is not good and i'm not saying that having an age gap in a relationship is always necessarily a red flag like if you're both consenting adults then you know that's cool but i think when you couple the age gap with the other things going on here that's what makes it a red flag you know what i mean oh i'm gonna lose my faith in humanity if this is meant to be a relationship that you're supposed to root for. It can't be. Oh my god, there's so many red flags. Anyways, um, don't have sex with your therapist, kids. Okay, um, I'm going to bed now. Good night. <laughs> Fun start to the vlog. <laughs> It's Saturday and I went for a walk this morning, which was a lot of fun, then came back and took a shower. I've read some more of Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh. Eh, I still do not like the main character at all. I find her judgmental. Don't care for her, to be honest. I have a theory about who I think might be behind the deaths of her parents, but I don't know. If it's correct or not, there is one character, though, that I really have my eye on. Hello. Uh, it's Sunday now. My room's a mess. I'm still in my pajamas, and I need to get ready for the day. I have to clean up a little bit around here because we're having people over for a Labor Day celebration. I mean, nobody really celebrates Labor Day. It's just an excuse to have a long weekend and hang out for most people, but you know what I mean. So, need to straighten up a little bit around here. Maybe I should make my bed, because I like never make my bed, but they say that, you know, people who make their bed every day are just more productive and well-adjusted, so maybe if I did that I could finally get my life together. My plans for the day, other than having a cookout later, is that I am going to read the two books I'm in the middle of, Four Queens and Let Me Lie. I definitely think I can finish one of them this weekend. I have made great progress on both of them. I think I'm about 
40% of the way into each at this point, give or take. And I'm also going to film a uh, video for you guys today. I'm going to finally film my August wrap up. And I'm excited because I have really been wanting to share my thoughts on some of the books that I read in August. So that is exciting. In case you are wondering how my social media detox is going, honestly, I've been having a great weekend. The only time I almost broke my social media detox is yesterday, I think. I, by force of habit, clicked on the Instagram app and then immediately realized, crap, I'm not supposed to be using this. And so then I just quickly exited out of it uh, before I saw anything. But honestly, you know, I've been having a good weekend just focusing on doing what I want to do, relaxing, taking some time to myself. So, so far it's been really, really good. And I will talk to you guys later when I have something to share. So I'm gonna go get my life together now. Bye. <laughs>
I am still reading Four Queens by Nancy Goldstone. I think I am like 50% of the way through and I am really really enjoying this so far. I think it's written in a very engaging way so even though it is historical nonfiction, in my opinion it's not at all dry and I have been interested in what's gone on so far in the text. If it keeps up I might give it five stars to be honest. I really like it. Finally, I did end up going back on Instagram today and I think what I personally am going to take from this social media free weekend is I just need to be mindful about when I'm using social media. Like I think I mentioned earlier, I would always check Instagram first thing in the morning and last thing before I went to bed. And you know, I think that's probably not a great way to use it because, you know, the beginning of the day and the end of the day is really going to set the tone for what's to come. And so I think I should use those moments to center myself, practice mindfulness, think about the things in my life that I have to be grateful for. And another thing is I'm going to try to start planning activities that I can do while also being safe. I am vaccinated. I will wear a mask in indoor spaces, but that way I can feel like I have control over my life again because I feel like this pandemic has just caused me so much anxiety due to things that are out of my control and the fear of the unknown and not knowing what's to come. So I really want to just focus on enjoying my life while also being safe because, you know, we only got this one life to live, guys, you know, and I want to do things that I want to do and not let fear and anxiety hold me back. So everyone, that's it for this weekend reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed. If you've read any of the books that I read in this vlog, do let me know in the comment section what did you think of them. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I hope the rest of your day is simply grand. Bye and I will see you in the next video.